Alright, acceleration test awaited. Gosh, this road's busy already. my latest purchase. Yes, I've replaced the Citroen XM with a Toyota RAV4. That will concede my primary motivation for buying um, anything Japanese was that I'm editing Retro Japanese magazine and I felt the Citroen XM wasn't a very good representative of Japanese cars. So. That, that one has been sold and I also wanted a break from diesels because to be honest diesel engines sound awful and while this doesn't exactly sound brilliant um, it doesn't sound like a diesel hard acceleration aside it's quite a quiet engine which is nice and it also seems to have a good spread of torque so I can use the gears just as I tended to on the XM first gear on this um, 5 speed manual is actually very low to make up for the fact that there's no proper low ratio gearbox. Most 4x4s have an extra gearbox effectively which gives you a massive drop down so you get all these very low gears. It means you get a lot more control off road. And if you're going to do off roading that is the problem. I've already taken to the lanes in this car and I did miss that low box at times. It has a diff lock operated by a button on the dashboard, so that makes it equivalent to a lot of Land Rovers, which are permanent four wheel drive with a lockable centre diff. Now I like that because that means you've got permanent four wheel drive, so all the wheels are driven at all times. Whereas with the selectable system, you always feel there's a bit of a compromise going on. The only time you really notice the lack of gears is if you're crawling over rocks um, or going down very steep hills. There's no ABS on this one, so going down steep rock peak sort of descents was horrible, if I'm honest. Of course the benefit is that it doesn't drive like most 4x4s. As a transverse engine that sort of canted back a bit, so the weight distribution is very good. And I mean, on, on the road it does drive pretty much like a normal car. It doesn't roll around in the bends, it never feels heavy and unwieldy. But you can corner at quite high speeds and it's quite enjoyable to do so. At the moment I'm testing some Michelin Latitude Cross tyres, which are meant to give good on-road behaviour as well as good off-road behaviour. Um, I'm looking forward to putting those through their paces and there will be a follow-up video where I take to the lanes and actually take my camera with me this time. As to be said, these um, Latitude Cross tyres do seem fairly quiet. I mean, it's noticeable when I pick this car up, quite a lot of road noise. There's only a thin bit of carpet in the back over the boot floor. Um, so quite a lot of tyre noise comes through, but these tyres do seem a little bit quieter actually. Here a fair amount of transmission noise going on. And a bit of wind noise as well. You can create a lot more wind noise by removing the two roof panels. And I've done an awful lot of that recently, and may do a bit later on this trip. I'm currently driving to Coventry for the Coventry Motor Fest. But at the moment it's not quite warm enough to get the roof panels on. And it also creates a lot of wind noise, so you, you would struggle to hear me over the buffeting. I thought I'd record this video now while well, things are still nice and quiet. But yes, both panels can be removed, this one will also tilt and they're stored in the rear door, which is fairly clever um, until you realise that with the panels hanging off the inside of the rear door um, you've no 
there lost all of your tiny, tiny boot space. You get all the usual SUV perks, you're sitting nice and high up, you've got a great view. These side windows are enormous, it takes about half an hour for them to go down. But with those down and the panels out, you feel like you're in a roadster, it's great. Especially as the weather has been fantastic since I bought this car. It isn't exactly comprehensive switch gear. I've got electric windows, I've got electric mirrors, um, I've got hazard warning lights and a heated rear window. And that pretty much concludes the specification. There is power steering and it is far too light. There is an airbag as well and I was confused when I got the car because there was no airbag warning light. I was like, well, that's not right, surely there must be one. But it turns out it's a mechanical airbag. So there's something lined up towards the point of an impact, and if it goes bang sufficiently, something moves, it ignites the powder, and boom, the airbag explodes in your face. I didn't know mechanical airbags existed, but it turns out they're generally only fitted to Toyotas and Jaguars. So I've got an XJS on the drive, right? turns out that's got a mechanical airbag as well. But I hadn't worried about the lack of airbag light in that because it's not my car. Now this car does have a tow bar, although it turns out the towing electrics are a complete mess. I found a cable in there yesterday because there's a socket on the back, but wasn't wired in. So I spent quite a lot of time wiring it in and the socket still didn't work. Uh, it turns out there was another wire just lying in there not attached to anything and the one on the actual trailer plug isn't long enough to reach any of the other wiring. Now we're going to have to buy another socket and uh, give it another test. But I have got a tow bar, I will be towing the caravan with it once I've sorted out the sodding electrics and we'll see how it does. On paper, this has exactly the same towing capacity as the XM. But the XM was broad and long and heavy. And um, I'm yet to be convinced that this is going to be entirely happy towing that much weight. The very low first gear should be very useful for getting underway, towing a heavy weight. But it's, it's stability that's of prime concern, given how short the wheelbase is. The wheelbase is actually lower, sorry, got distracted by a pickup part and side brake. The wheelbase is actually shorter than the wheelbase of the Perodua Nipper. That's pretty short, it's about 86 inches. On the plus side, there is practically no rear overhang at all. So the tow bar is practically between the rear wheels, so that should be good for stability. The more rear overhang you've got, the more pendulum effects you can get. Overall, in this first report, I'm very happy with the car. It's nice and easy to drive, it's quite enjoyable when you're pushing on, apart from the totally dead steering. Not that the XM steering didn't really gave you any feedback. And it's quite a lot of fun just to bounce around it. So, Today I'll find out what it's like on a long journey. So there will be um, a green lightning video, so stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and um, have a brief through my video history. There's lots of videos there now. Uh, thank you for watching. See you again. Ta-da.